Thank you. I'm truly honored to be part of tonight's Hall of Fame ceremony and present Mike McLucas, Stonehill Class of 1995, for induction into the Stonehill Athletic Hall of Fame. Mike is one of the top running backs in the history of Stonehill football program history. He is one of five 2,000-yard rushers in program history, currently ranking fourth on the program's all-time list with 2,160 career rushing yards. He also ranks among program career leaders for rushing attempts, rushing touchdowns, all-purpose yards, and total touchdowns. Mike was the first Stonehill football player to receive the Golden Helmet Award from the New England Football Writers following his program record 250-yard performance against Nichols College in 1994, scoring three touchdowns on 32 carries that afternoon. A four-year starter, Mike helped Stonehill to four straight winning seasons and 24 total wins, including a 72 record as a junior. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome for induction into the Stonehill Athletic Hall of Fame, class of 1995, Mike McLucas. Thank you for that introduction, Vandy, and good luck against AIC. First off, I'd like to thank the members of the Hall of Fame Election Committee for selecting me for one of the most prestigious honors of my life, and I'd also like to congratulate all of tonight's inductees. I'd like to thank my family members for being here tonight and supporting me, my lovely wife, Deborah, Stonehill College class of 1996, my beautiful daughters, Lara and Chloe, my fabulous in-laws, Bob and Ellen Medeiros. Unfortunately, my brother, Sean, was unable to attend this evening due to prior obligations, but I'd like to thank him for challenging me as a kid and being tough on me because I think that that led to giving me a competitive edge. I'm sure anyone who has a brother that's four years older than you can relate. I'd also like to thank my uncles, Bob, Larry, and David for being here, as well as my cousins, Jeff, Danny, and Lauren. I, w I wasn't expecting you, and uh, I'm thrilled. I'm beyond thrilled that you're here. Thank you so much. It means so much to me. My football career started in 1978. It's not going to be, a, I'm not going to be up here for an hour, so. Um, I was six years old, and you had to be seven years old to play Pop Warner in, in Everett. And after so much perseverance um, to my father, he finally caved, and he got some whiteout, and he got my birth certificate, and he did what he had to do <laughs> to let me play football. I wore number 73, and I had a penchant for piling on after a tackle was already made. Um, after that, I became a running back, and I was a running back for the next 21 years of my life. Um, my father would be my greatest coach by giving me feedback on what I did where, well and where I needed to improve. Unfortunately, my father had passed away at age 66, and I miss him every day. I played high school football at Everett High School, a perennial Division I powerhouse. I believe they're winning tonight, by the way, in the playoffs. I followed that with a year of prep school at Maine Central Institute, and then came to Stonehill College in the summer of 1991. However, that wasn't the first time I had visited the campus. I was invited to Stonehill by a former high school football teammate, Richie Rocco, in 1990. Richie was a charismatic and gregarious football player at Everett High School and Stonehill College, and he encouraged me to come to Stonehill. When I arrived here, I immediately fell in love with the campus. And Richie pressured Coach Wanton to do all that he could to bring me on board. Richie was a tremendous defensive end and captain, and together we beat Bentley College in 1991 to become champions of the then Eastern Collegiate Football Conference. For your efforts and for support of me, I am forever grateful, Richie, and I hope to see you up here in the near future. Thank you, Richie. You don't get to the Hall of Fame without being around other terrific players and coaches, so they'll be recognized as well. I was able to play with some great linemen, such as Hall of Famer Todd Dawson, and my personal favorite, Scotty Salius, who gave me the nickname Luke. No one in my life had ever 
called me that before, and if I made a decent play, he'd just yell out, yeah, Luke, like that, and it kind of caught on, and um, that's the type of thing that actually got me really fired up, kept me going. Tonight, I joined two fellow co-captains in the Hall of Fame, quarterback Tony Delacano, who hails from East Boston and was someone I could relate to from being in the inner city. Dell had an absolute cannon for an arm, and I'll never forget his five touchdown passes against MIT. He made my life a lot easier, knowing that the defenses had to respect our passing attack. I'd also like to recognize the other co-captain, Dan Gamash from Walpole, who played defensive end and was a total sack master. He had an engine that wouldn't quit. Coach Dave Swanton gave me an opportunity to start as a freshman, and I took advantage of it. I remember a game up in Siena. It seemed like they gave me the ball 20 times in a row, and it was like four yards, five yards, four yards, five yards. It wasn't anything glamorous. Um, hell, although I was exhausted, I was just so psyched that I didn't come out of the game. My favorite Coach Swanton story happened when we visited Western New England College. And the perimeter of the field was lined with milk bone dog biscuits. It turns out that a football player he was trying to recruit to Stonehill was contemplating going to Western New England College or, or Stonehill. And Coach Swanton quipped to him you know, when, in regards to going to Wenick, why have dog food when you can have steak? Coach Mike Tassoni, defensive coordinator. I asked him if I could play some defense my senior year, but he was convinced that the head coach wouldn't allow it. Coach Tassoni had a very fiery personality. He was passionate and intense. I'm not sure if he realized it, but that was infectious, and it always raised my level of play, even though I didn't play on his side of the ball. Coach Connie Driscoll was my running back coach for four years and our head coach for my junior and senior seasons. My junior year, I tore my quadricep muscle in camp, and I kept on trying to accelerate the healing process, which led to longer recovery. However, due to Coach Driscoll's scuba shorts that he had specially made for me, um, I was able to be converted to a fullback and at least play, knowing that I couldn't hit top speed until later in the season. By the time we were ready to play Bentley for our league title, I was beginning to feel better. But in the first quarter of that championship game, I broke my hand. I went off to the sidelines and had them put a special pad over it so I could get back in the game. Nothing was preventing me from playing against the hated Bentley Falcons. I was able to score three touchdowns in that game, yet it wasn't enough as we lost on a block punt and a last minute touchdown. It was the toughest loss of my career, and many of you here tonight know what I'm talking about. And some of the funny things you remember, you know, while we were all dealing with the depression of that loss, I turned around and I saw our quarterback, Tony Dell, in anger, grab a football and throw it over the tallest tree on the Bentley campus. And I just remember looking up going, wow, Tony really did have a great arm. Getting back to Coach Driscoll, he had a ball drill that he used to do with us where we'd go out for a pass and catch a ball with one hand. And that's the type of visionary he was way, way before the likes of Odell Beckham Jr. That actually came in handy a couple of times, Coach, so thank, thank you for that. He also had another drill where the linebacker would run full speed at us and the running backs would have to step up and, and block them. We call this the Excedrin drill. I don't know if you knew that or not, Coach. Uh, I sometimes wonder if this might lead to early onset CTE, but I'm keeping my fingers crossed. <laughs> Coach Driscoll was always in my corner and respected my feedback of what I was seeing on the field and the suggestions I made regarding plays, which I typically advocated for draws and screens to me. He came with me and my family to Harvard University when I received the Coca-Cola Gold Helmet Award for my efforts against Nichols College in 1994, 
And I thank you for your support, which helped to get me inducted this evening. Thank you, Coach. I was able to play football with another great player, defensive back Sean Daly, who's also from Walpole. Sean was a great athlete who covered the whole field and hit like a truck. He played way beyond his stature. He was a fabulous athlete and a comedic genius who always knew how to make people laugh and keep the locker room light and loose. He would regularly prank Coach Driscoll by going into his Jeep, turning up the radio full blast and putting on his wiper blades on so high so when Coach got into his car and turned it on, he'd get quite a jolt. I'm thankful for Sean's mother who hemmed my purple at-home game shirt. That shirt originally came down to my knees um, and it wasn't too comfortable when I had to tuck it in and if it came out, uh, it would have made me easy to tackle. So thank you for that. I'd like to thank my lifelong friend, Jerry Navarra, who's here tonight. You don't get to be a good athlete without competing against talented players, and Jerry was terrific at everything. Football, basketball, stickball, wiffle ball, and so on. Thanks for being here tonight, Jerry. I truly appreciate your friendship and support. I have a great deal of appreciation for the trainers, Butch Raines and Cindy McDonald. Butch gave the best tape jobs, and I fondly remember lubing up before practice and games with a large pump of Flexol 454 so I wouldn't pull a muscle. I'd be remiss without noting that Butch liked to control the equipment. One summer at Stonehill, we had a player named Darren McCarthy, who also played football with me at Everett High School, who had an issue with his face mask. So Butch took off his face mask and told him he'd fix it later. Darren ran around for a few practices without a face mask, which was quite hysterical. During my junior year, Cindy used the hydroculator and ultrasound machine on my injured quad almost every day, and I'm so grateful for all the support from those two people who often go unrecognized. I'd like to mention my roommate, Greg McTighe, who played running back and wide receiver. He was a great player and a friend who tragically passed away earlier this year. He had a positive impact on my life and my football career. Before I mention my final thank you, I'd like to mention the things that I miss most about playing football. Simply put, I miss the camaraderie, being part of a team, practice and preparation, putting on the equipment, and the exhilaration of game day. Football's taught me a lot about teamwork, perseverance, overcoming adversity, and goal setting. These attributes have transferred to my everyday life and have certainly helped me in my career as a principal and my family life. The last person I'd like to thank is my mother, Irene Louise McLucas, who cannot be with us tonight due to illness. She raised me and my brother as a single mother in 1975. And uh, she made sure that we were always involved in sports and she did the best she could to provide us with everything we needed growing up. When I got to Stonehill College, she made visits and wrote letters trying to get me as much financial aid as possible. She, along with my aunt and grandmother, never missed any of my football games. She would shout, that's my son, if I made a decent play. For years, I thought she was fragile, and I never knew how truly tough my mother was until this year. In early January, she was diagnosed with pneumonia, and we weren't able to take her out for her birthday, which was January 27th. When antibiotics didn't work, she was sent back for more tests, which confirmed that she had stage four lung cancer. She's battled through chemotherapy and immunotherapy to no avail. Just this Wednesday, we learned that she was going to be getting hospice, and she had about three months to go. So now as she enters the twilight of her life, our goal is to keep her comfortable and happy. I'm having this speech videoed for her, and I just wanted to say, if anyone deserves an ovation tonight, it's her. I love you, Mom.
To Stonehill College, thank you for a top-notch education and this tremendous recognition, which I will cherish forever. Thank you.